Hey developers, today we're going to talk about computer science engineering versus full stack certificate, how to transition into IT and much more. So stay tuned and watch all the way to the end. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer with many years of software development experience. I'm also the author of the Vue.js in action book right behind me. So I do a lot of tutorials on Vue.js, JavaScript, career advice, interview help. So if you want any more information about any of that, make sure you click on the link below. Before we get too far, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Guys, when you're building your own website, whether it's for yourself, your business, or a brand, one of the hardest things to do is to find that awesome domain name that is short, relevant, and most importantly, available. Well, thanks to Dot Tech Domains, finding the perfect domain for your website is one less thing to worry about. Programmers, tech startups, and brands finally have a domain extension of their own. Dot Tech perfectly encapsulates what you stand for and has excellent recall value, enabling you to stand out from the crowd. Brands like Intel, Viacom, even the world's biggest electronics show, CES, are using .tech domains. With the .tech domains Black Friday sale coming up, it's the perfect time to secure domain at 95% off. In fact, if you pre-register now, you can get an additional 10% off. So make sure you go to www.go.tech slash Eric or click in the description below to get your .tech domain now. It's a really great deal. Just click on that link in the description now. Thanks. Hey, so I put out a call out for some questions from my community. I actually uh, I help moderate Code Tech and Caffeine Facebook group. If you're interested in it, I, there's a link below. And I asked if anybody had any questions, so I got a few. So I thought uh, today I'll go ahead and I'll riff through some of these questions. I don't have a ton of time. Actually, uh, I have a few things to do today. So I thought uh, this would be a quick, fun video that I can kind of give some opinions on things. So first question I have here is, from Shayla, career advice for those looking to transition to IT, and she's a teacher. So there is definitely this divide between software developers and people in IT. Sometimes people get them confused because they do similar things. Usually the IT people are the people, uh, sometimes known as DevOps, are the people that actually create and put up the environments that the developers use. Sometimes IT also gets mixed into corporate IT where you're kind of like the help desk that gets answers phone calls when people's printers break or when servers need to be um, rebooted, things like that. So it depends on what level of sophistication the organization you're trying to enter in is. Uh, as for IT, it's, it's usually um, just as hard to get into as software development, but it's not at the point where you need, uh, just like software development, you don't need a computer science degree, you don't need an IT degree. But I do see that there's a lot of help. Uh, it really helps if you have some certifications and if you try to get into IT, especially if you're brand new and don't have anything. Um, there's a bunch of, of different types of certs, especially if you're gonna go for, like if you're looking to be a Cisco certified, or A plus certified was kind of an old school cert that I that I was interested in when I was younger. So that's like a basic, like how do you take apart a computer? What's the basic network terminology, things like that. I would see um, if you're interested to moving into that field, I would definitely take a look at the different certifications out there. I would definitely do some Googling. There's a lot of IT training out there. I would even look at uh, some videos and I would look at uh, training programs that help you out. I don't think I don't think there's IT boot camps. There's also, obviously there's IT institutions that teach you a lot of that, but I would just try to get my foot in the door somewhere. You probably can get paid like nine, $10 an hour at, uh, at a small company just to start doing IT. Just be the guy that, be the guy or gal that um, you know, helps when the printer breaks down, helps doing the help desk type stuff. And then really you'd wanna start honing your skills to get better, to start learning um, more development operations, helping people uh, submit their code, how to bring up environments, tear down environments. You may wanna look at a specialization like uh, Amazon or Google. Um, so you can look at, look at all the different services there. There's big money in that. Um, that's what I would strive for. Maybe start off simple, like more of a help desk position and then try to move up into more of those more DevOps types positions out there. So, and look at the certifications out there. So good luck on that. Uh, Sean asks, what projects would you make for a portfolio site? So the conventional wisdom out there for portfolio sites is that you should create uh, like an e-commerce site and a few, you know, to-do app and maybe you do a Twitter clone. I hear that a lot. 
Uh, I would just try to find a pet project that's outside of those three or four that everybody does and try to stand out up from the crowd. Unfortunately, being a, a new web developer is really difficult. You need to do anything you can to stand out from the crowd. If you know someone at the company, that's probably the best bet. But otherwise, I would try to create a really cool portfolio of projects that not everyone else has and make sure you have all the code up on GitHub and then just work with like local companies, companies that are gonna look at that portfolio and be impressed by it. And just put a lot of effort and time into it. So I would avoid doing kind of the projects everybody else is doing like e-commerce sites and to-do apps and things like that. If that's all you could do though, uh, you know, that's better than nothing. But I would try to go a little bit above and beyond that. All right, so next question by Neo, full stat certificate or computer science engineering, what's best and why? So I, I think I've said this a few times before, I have a computer science degree. I think it really helped me get my foot in the door. I mean, I, got, I graduated during kind of the downturn in the economy in the US where the housing crisis was at the highest and people weren't hiring as often, especially in my area, but I was still able to get a job. Um, it was tough, but I think having a degree, if you're coming right out of high school is a great option. Plus there's a, there's there there is still a lot of organizations that'll look at having a degree and that will put you at the top of the list or at least the top of the heap when they're trying to hire new developers compared to if you don't have any experience, you don't have any degree, then that's a lot more difficult. Uh, on the other hand, getting like a going to a coding boot camp and trying to get a, like a full stack certificate, which I'm assuming that's what he's talking about. I guess there's probably some online programs where you can get full stack certificates. Uh, usually you're going to pay about the same price you would for a college education or at least one year of that. So typically those ones are ten to twenty thousand dollars. They're pretty extensive. They're, sometimes they're six weeks to like three to six months at sometimes. Some of them have sharing of revenue after you graduate. So you're gonna spend a lot of money. If that's a concern, you probably don't wanna go with a coding bootcamp. Uh, at the end of the day, what I always tell people is, if you're straight out of high school and you're really interested in this field, I would really recommend going to college and trying to get that degree. Look at the computer science program. Um, if you are not, like let's say you're in your mid twenties, you're looking to switch careers, your mid thirties, then I would say maybe look at these coding boot camps. And then if all else fails and you have no money, but you have such a passion uh, and, and, and you really wanted to get into this field, teaching yourself how to program is probably the hardest route you can do it, but there is some amazing success stories. Dylan, my buddy from Coding Tutorials 360 did it. He put an amazing amount of effort and was able to, to do it. Um, not everybody can do that, um, but I would say it just depends on your circumstance and I would try to look for where you are in your life. If you can go to school and you can get, hopefully you're maybe in a place that you can get a, um, get someone can help pay for it. That, that would be the best bet too. All right, so I have a few other questions here. Uh, Samuel asks, how do you prepare for a big project and do you do a mock-up for the client? After the design is accepted, how do you proceed? So, uh, what we do is for a big project, there's there's a whole bunch of different entities, different people involved in different companies, especially if you're running an agency or you're in a big company or a small company working on a project, but usually you have project managers. Um, if you're in an agile place, you might have uh, product owners, you might have scrum masters um, and you have designers and then you have developers. So there's, and then of course you have marketing and you have uh, like management, things like that. So the, everybody has a little bit of different role to play. So typically like on a big project, you would have, well, let's say if you're an agency and you're working with a client, you would have to have salespeople obviously connect to the client, get them interested. And then you have usually not the same person, but it may be like a prod, product manager or a project manager that is, that would talk to the customer and try to find the requirements for what they are actually looking for. And then to outline those projects, um, you would actually create um, a bunch of different files. So maybe the product manager, or excuse me, I keep in mixing those two product and project, they do different things, but maybe the project manager will work with a designer to come up with some mockups. Maybe those written in Photoshop. And then eventually when the customer goes and back, back and forth through the mockups and approves it, then those will be converted to sketch files and then those sketch files will work with the product owners to write up requirements for each one of those pages. 
and then that'll finally get to the developers. And then this can all be tracked in Jira is pretty popular. Some people use Trello. There's a bunch of different uh, product management software out there to make this process easier. Um, do you do a mock-up for the client? Yeah, absolutely. You would definitely do some sort of mock-up for the client, if not in some Photoshop files or Illustrator or something else, at least to give them an idea of what you're actually creating and have them approve it before you actually start coding. And there's a whole bunch of other steps in there regarding, um, depending on the agency, they might ask for a half up front or a third up front before they actually have the developers start working on it. Um, depending if it's a huge client, they may uh, they may ask for more or less depending on the agency and how much work it's going to be. But that's typically how it works. How do you know in advance how many hours it will take to do something for a client if you have not any idea? Uh, it's all about your project management, trying to find out what deliverables that the client expects, taking something like Jira and talking to the developers who actually take each part of the requirements and give hours for it. So that's usually how it works. All right, so I think that's about it for now. Uh, we'll probably have some more questions I'll answer in the next video, but thank you guys. If you guys have any questions or comments below, leave it. Let me know if you have any different opinion on any of these. Thanks and take care.